morning and welcome to your Frontier opening bell. This is the first business and markets day across Frontier Africa. Of course, Nigerian markets closed for this Monday for Muslim holiday. Uh, we're just getting the breaking news as it were. Let's just give that to you today. Nigeria's uh, statistics office reporting Nigeria's inflation for the month of August down to 32.15%. And that's relative to a higher 33.4% in the month of July. The Central Bank of Nigeria is said to decide interest rate decision next week, Tuesday. The two day MPC meeting starts on Monday, the 23rd, finishing the afternoon on Tuesday with the regular media briefing. Two straight months of inflation easing, July and August for Nigeria, will the central bank decide to lower interest rates for the first time in as much as three years. Last, we're we'll going to wait on. In the meantime, we've got a positive GDP numbers for the second quarter. Would that be another positive concentration for the monetary policy uh, meeting or uh, committee under uh, Yamika Doso, the central bank governor? We also got a positive trade balance report, the last figure for the month uh, for the second quarter as well. So we're looking at this. But again, you've got to deal with volatile exchange rates and the wobbling Naira. How would, the, how would the central bank decide next week, Tuesday? Is anyone scarce? But let's see what's the money's on the table for or against a hold or at least a uh, cut. Let's keep that in mind. Tomorrow, the U.S. central bank, the Fed, will decide on interest rate at least 0.25% on the table already. Let's take it to the market. What's it going to look like from today? Let's see where we finished off Friday first, where the Nigerian market was up 0.44%. The BRVM in Cote d'Ivoire finished by 0.26% positive. The Egyptian market was uh, fin was uh, positive Thursday by four basis points. The Nairobi Securities Exchange was better by half a percent. In South Africa, it was 0.38%, a very big jump to the upside. About 6% on the Zimbabwe stock market. Ghana market also finished positive on Friday. So you've got a bit of a comeback, as it were, to wrap up last week, the second week in September. Let's take it on and take on what's the big headlines as we start the new week in East Africa. What's the big story? Of course, the East Africa's arbitration conference is starting this week in Addis Ababa. The team's already arriving for this two-day important uh, conference <clears throat> on the calendar of the legal personnel, professionals doing industrial, commercial, business arbitration, business in East Africa and across the continent. We expect the uh, AMA conference to also pick the Africa's arbitrator of the year. We'll be reporting that for you from Thursday. Keep that in mind. In the meantime, the United Nations uh, Economic Commission for Africa and the African Union have launched a project that will improve free movement of persons and migration across the African continent, while the Kenya's Internal Revenue Agency is warning that banks are selling non-existent uh, insurance uh, 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 products to the people. That's against the law. You have Mombasa support, the biggest in East Africa and one of the largest in Africa, receiving its first LNG-powered vessel, while South Korea's POSCO is looking to invest $40 million in Tanzania's black rock mining. Let me take that to West Africa. Just as we get Nigeria's inflation coming in, food inflation is being reported below 40%, 37.52%. That's the latest that the statistics office is reporting this morning, even as the country's inflation, headline inflation is uh, reported at a lower 32.15% against 33.4% for the month of July. The Dangote refinery, and this is where we're all head scratching right now. The Dangote refinery on one hand and the NNPC denies that it's selling petrol to the NNPC at 898 <clears throat> per liter. Overnight, the NNPC released a template that shows that petrol prices will be around 900 naira in Nigeria, in Lagos. That is, if you go to the far e northeast, where you have Meduguri Bono State at the extreme end of Nigeria to the eastern corridor, petrol will sell for a couple of naira above a thousand uh, per liter across the northwest, the southeast, and the south south. The average will be around 900 naira per liter. And that's the latest. Nigerians are on a public holiday. If you go on social media, you see all the whole content coming through in terms of angst against why should the Dangote petrol being produced in Nigeria sell as much as 900 naira per liter. It's still early days. We're going to see what the reactions will be. In the meantime, the administration of President Tinubu has been sued by Serap, one of the social economic uh, rights group for 
fixing the fuel price is all very muddled up right now. The murky waters is not any clearer than where we were last week, last month, a year ago. Right now, no one is sure who is telling what and why. In the meantime, the Central Bank of Nigeria has released inflationary expectation survey, which shows that inflation will decelerate and the current number we got this morning, the 16th of September, is uh, uh, making uh, a sense out of what the inflation expectation report was last week from the Central Bank. Will this be the uh, decision, a key factor for the Central Bank to cut interest rate or at least to hold? In the economic, in out of economic news, in earnings news, MTN Nigeria reporting a very robust growth in its business operations, data, voice, digital platforms. However, the weak Naira resulted in the giant telcos loss after tax of roughly 600 billion, 520 billion Naira to be exact for the first six months of this year. And we're expecting the Central Bank of Ghana to decide interest rates on the same day as Nigeria, 24th, that's next week. Why Japan says it's donating about $3 million worth of rice to support food sustainability in Liberia, in West Africa. You have been briefed. Let's move to Southern Africa. Grab a few headlines. Of course, the country is still mourning Pavin Garden, the iconic, uh, the iconic cabinet minister who passed away late last week at the age of 75. In the meantime, a survey is showing that South Africa's central bank will deliver at least 25 basis points repo cut tomorrow. That will be the 18th day on, sorry, on Thursday, I beg your pardon, uh, 19th, on Thursday, 19th of uh, September, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 17th is when the US uh, FOMC will decide. We'll keep an eye on that. Old Mucho CEO Gobodo has resigned from office alongside two other executives. That announcement came in over the weekend. Uh, in Zimbabwe, National Land Holdings is uh, decrying the shortage of FX, US dollars, that is, within the FX market, official FX market of the South of the Zimbabwe's uh, uh, central uh, market, central bank controlled market. And Botswana's GDP uh, prospects is dimming because of diamond slump, while Unilever in Zimbabwe has packed up its operations, boots on the ground, and asking distributors to, to line up to sell its imported products in the Southern African economy. So let's go to North Africa and give you what's to start the new week uh, as far as the headlines are concerned. Morocco has approved expansion of the Tangier Automotive uh, City in the free zone uh, of, the, of the country, while Egypt and Norway are uh, working together to secure green hydrogen partnership between the, uh, the European country and the biggest economy north of the continent. Here, banks and companies are offering about 73.09 billion Egyptian pounds on the Affordable Housing Initiative, and that will be uh, until the end of August. The money is on the table, and you can just pick it up. You've got about uh, some time to do that. Sudan, forests are at risk because folks are using more charcoal. Charcoal is in more demand. There's a shortage of gas. Folks have got to cook. They have to keep warm for the winter ahead. So they're depending on cutting down or felling trees and turning them into charcoal to make simple and affordable cooking, which is, of course, dangerous to the environment and human consumption as well in terms of the fumes that come from the burning of a firewood. But charcoal is in high demand, and the forest in Sudan, we won't pay the heavy price and the environment, and, of course, all of us on planet Earth. And those are your headlines to start in the new week. Hope you have a very profitable Monday to start your third business week in the month of um, September. Bye for now.